Well, today's a pretty good day to talk about the entertainment industry because Governor Deal just announced today the statistics for fiscal year 2017, and he announced that the entertainment industry has generated $9.5 billion in the state of Georgia in 20, for fiscal year 2017. So that's great. Um, what happened is, there's a, there's a reason, a very specific reason, Georgia has become such a preferred state for filmmakers. Up until just three years ago, Georgia was sixth in the country in terms of productions. It was after California, New York, North Carolina, Louisiana, and Florida. Well, Louisiana and Florida greatly curtailed their production incentives, and that sent their states into kind of a, a nosedive. North Carolina had a double whammy. They not only curtailed their incentives, they also passed the bathroom bill. And that absolutely dried up production in the state of North Carolina. So Georgia has skyrocketed up to third, and most people believe by the end of this year, it may well eclipse New York and be second only to California in the amount of production dollars spent. Um, <clears throat> there are already more features being shot in Georgia than in California but the overall dollars being spent still are greater in California. Now, um, the reason that Georgia has become such a preferred destination is the famous 30% tax credit that you get when you come to Georgia. And that means for every dollar you spend in the state on a production, you, the state gives you a 30% tax credit. And you can then sell that in advance. You can get pre-certified and usually Productions sell it for in the range of 80 to 84 cents on the dollar before they even start shooting and they use that money then to finance the film. So that's what brings people here. There's only one state with a higher one and that's Kentucky who has a 35% credit but they just passed that within the last month and there's no crew in the state of Kentucky. All the crews here in Georgia so We'll see, but uh, it, they certainly don't pose any serious threat to Georgia's production at any time uh, in the near future. So that's Georgia overall, but what about our corner of the state down in the southeast? Well, that's where things have become a little more challenging because of all of the money being spent up through 2014, only 1% of it was being spent in southeast Georgia or in the coastal empire. And there's no reason, I mean, there's no reason to believe we'd ever be able to surpass Atlanta, of course, as far as a filming destination, but we can sure do a heck of a lot better than 1%. And that's been our goal and what we've been trying to build toward, and it's been working. So the huge monetary potential of the entertainment industry in this area has been known for a while, okay? Um, back in 2011, I was reading that the Savannah Economic Development Authority, CETA as they go by, they com commissioned a study that they called a Competitive Positioning Analysis and Target Industry Study. And that was to find the industries that had the largest potential for growth in the entire region, okay? Not only was film and television production number one on that list with growth potential, but it was determined that if it was developed right, that film and television production could rank right up there with the five major pillars of our local economies down here, being the port, logistics, tourism, healthcare, and the military. It was believed that if the proper infrastructure was put in place, it could be on par with those five pillars of the economy. So here's what CETA did, at least in Savannah, in 2014 and 2015. The first thing they did is they hired a guy out in LA named Ralph Singleton with about 40 years in, in the industry, and he went to all the producers out in LA, used all his contacts, and started encouraging them to come to Savannah. That had a good impact. Uh, they also passed two local incentives. One incentive was for every production that filmed in Chatham County, they get an extra 10% on top of the 30% they're getting from the state. So if, it, if they can make it work in Savannah, they'll get 40% as opposed to 30%. And then the last thing they did was they did a relocation incentive, meaning that if people with at least five years of experience in the industry relocate to Savannah, they would reimburse them up to $2,000 of their moving expenses. And that has started now to build the local crew base in this area. Um, 
Beyond that, though, uh, it, it, you could see, once you started looking at the numbers, how these plans started working. I was, I was looking at the numbers just before I came in. In 2010, okay, the total entertainment production spending in Savannah, according to the records, was $4 million in 2010. In 2014, it had gone, as the state overall was really starting to grow, it had, that number had jumped up to $18 million. And then in 2015 is when the incentives, the local incentives kicked in. And in 2015, local spending went all the way up from 18 million to 60 million in 2015. So now that's just direct spend, direct budgeted spend. So film and television productions, what is one of my favorite parts about it is they pump so much more money into the economy locally than just the direct spend. I mean, restaurants, dry cleaners, uh, waste management, lodging, you name it. When a production comes to town, it's essentially an entire little community coming to town and they have every need of any other community. So there's very few industries that can't in some way benefit from film and television production. Um, it was determined that the overall economic impact of the film and television industry in Chatham County in 2015 was $127 million, is how they figured that. Now, if there's anybody here that believes that you have an industry or you have a business that may be able to offer, you know, some service to the entertainment industry, in Savannah at least there's a very easy way to do it. There's a database at filmsavannah.org where you can just go and register. And that's what every production that comes to Chatham County at least uses. They can print out your list there, your contact information, and they can contact you. There may be a similar one in Liberty County. I'm not sure, it certainly wouldn't surprise me. The thing to remember though is when you are dealing with the entertainment industry, it's a little bit different in that it's a seven day a week, 24 hour a day business. So they may, if you're a dry cleaner, for example, if you're willing to provide service at 2 a.m. on a Sunday, then by all means sign up because they will pay for that extra convenience, but they need it when they need it. And uh, because a lot of times they're here on a very short deadline and they've got to get things done, but it really can benefit you if you're willing to put in the extra effort. Now, um, here's where things get interesting. I told you about 2015. So then we move forward into 2016. And the numbers improved, but very little, not by much. They stayed relatively flat. Overall spending in Chatham County went from 127 million in 2015 to 130 million in 2016. Now, given the great exponential growth of the previous years, that was somewhat of a cause for concern. You know, why it had not, why the growth had not, had just stopped like that. Well, there was a reason for it, and the reason was Savannah hit capacity. There was nowhere else to put anything. Every place that was available was being used. And so in uh, 2015, I founded a group called the Savannah Film Alliance. And what it is is just a group where all the people involved in the film or television industry all got together in one room just to brainstorm and collaborate and try to cooperate. And we got together to talk about what can we do to expand the entertainment industry in this region. And it, the first thing we had to do was figure out what the problems were. And it turns out we identified three very specific problems. Number one was Southeast Georgia was having a huge problem and was getting a very bad reputation with productions because of unions. And what I mean is that Every film production deals with two unions primarily. One is SAG, the Screen Actors Guild, and they represent all the talent. Now that one's typically not the problem because the Screen Actors Guild has a nationwide contract. No matter where you film, you know what you're gonna pay, okay? It's based upon the experience of the actor, that type of thing, but everyone coming in knows how much you're gonna pay. The other one though, is called IATSE, the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. Now, the IA represents all of the crew. So 90% of the people you're paying are covered by the IA. Now, unlike SAG, 
the IA does not have a national term agreement. Well, they have a national term agreement, but only the big studios have access to those national term agreements. So if you're not Sony, Warner Brothers, Disney, um, you are going to have to negotiate an individual contract for your motion picture. They call it a single production deal. And the rates are astronomical. Um, there was a, just to give you a simple example, there was a production that I represented that came to Savannah called Divorce Party. And they had a $750,000 budget, but they had budgeted the national term agreement wages with the IA. By the time they actually signed the single production deal, their budget went all the way up to $1.1 million. They had to pay an extra $350,000 in crew wages just because they didn't realize that they were not entitled to the national agreement. And when these productions, which are already on pretty, you know, they have pretty slim margins there already, they come in and realize they have to pay hundreds of thousands of more to film in Savannah, it's a problem. So that was one thing that was killing pr productions and keeping it from growing was the union issue. The second was there were, you know, when Savannah first started the local incentive, it attracted every single scam artist, huckster, every person imaginable looking to come in and try to game the system in some way because there was no vetting going on. All you had to do was come in and fill out an application and they would earmark the money for you. And so in 2016, more than half the productions that came to Savannah left town owing either crew or local vendors money. And that is not a tenable you know, situation either. So now you've got production, you know, Savannah getting a bad reputation with productions because of the unions. You've got Savannah getting a bad reputation with crew members because of the, the lack of vetting and the fact that these non-legitimate productions are coming in and ripping people off. And that led us to the third and final problem, which was infrastructure. There was simply nowhere for productions to film in this region. This region at first had no sound stage. A sound stage is a big place where you go and build a set and you can film inside. You don't have to do location filming. There were none. Then there was one place that opened called Savannah Film Factory, and it is very small, it's dilapidated, and it way overcharges. And so some productions went in there, and they used it, and then came out saying, we will never use that again. And it's now been sitting empty for months, um, despite the fact that right now in Savannah, there's six movies and two television shows filming. The, there was supposed to be a solution, and that solution was going to be River Oaks studio out by the airport. And that was a giant warehouse that was gonna be converted into a soundstage. They had a grand opening and everything, and then they ran into a problem there, which was, it turns out that you could, they could deal with the fact they were at the airport and you had the passenger planes flying over. They could also deal with the fact that there was a railroad track right there. What they could not deal with was the Air Force training. And it turns out that jets buzzing overhead can put a stop to production pretty quickly. And so the owner went to the Air Force and said, well, can you at least give me a schedule of every time you're going to be training? And it turns out they don't want to do that. <laughs> so that effectively has destroyed the ability of River Oaks to, to host any kind of uh, productions because you can't risk coming in there with only a short window to film and having to shut down for two days while there's jets flying overhead. So right now, those were the three big problems. Well, I am happy to stand here today and announce to all of you that all three of those problems have now, I think, either been solved or will be solved by the end of this year. So I'll take one at a time. Let's take the, capac the capacity issue first, okay? We have a huge opportunity right now because I partnered with a state representative named Craig Gordon and we formed a group called Aeroscope Studios. And we put in a bid with the city of Savannah to purchase the uh, old Coastal Empire Fairgrounds. And we were just notified last week that we were the winning bid 
And so the next, we have 30 days to actually negotiate the final contract with the city. So out there on that land, if we are in fact successful, there is a big barn, it was the livestock barn that they called the cow palace, I think, which uh, is, can make a perfect shop, mill, where you can build sets. There's a giant airplane hangar that will be by far the biggest stage in the city. There's a huge office building, which can be production office space. Right adjacent to it is a big plot of land where we plan to build production housing. And we already had a crew come in uh, that has priced it all out and they believe that they can have the entire place complete within 60 days of the city signing the contract over to us at a very, very low cost. In fact, the guy, the guy that came and looked at the, air, the airplane hangar, the Quonset hut, said that in 40 years in the industry, he had never seen a place more perfectly suited for instant use as a stage. He said that thing was built to withstand weight, like, you know, it doesn't matter how many cameras you put in there, it can hold it. It's completely soundproof. He said, usually the problem, what makes things so expensive, is the power needs that you have to have. You take so much power to run these productions that you have to build in, you know, bring in all these extra lines and everything. But because that place was built to power the entire fair and all the merry-go-rounds and roller coasters and everything, there's already more than enough power there. He believes he can get all of that up and going in 60 days at less than a million dollars. That's how close it is to being able to just immediately start functioning. And from there, obviously, as things get going, you can, you can expand and there's much more land out there, but it's, it's a very exciting opportunity because there has been just, there has not been a facility like that. The housing in particular, I'll just do a little aside here. I don't know if you understand how key that is to the whole idea because first of all, Savannah's a tourist town. And if you're coming to film a movie here and you need 30 rooms for two weeks or 30 days, that's not easy to find. Especially if you're say in March, you're not gonna find 30 rooms in Savannah in March unless you wanna pay about $1,000 a night for each room. So it just, they just simply don't exist. Um, I'm sorry? Okay. Uh, the, uh, the other reason it's so important is because as a production, if you have to pay for a hotel for people, you also have to pay their travel time back and forth. So just by having it on set, on the site of the production, that can save about $30 per person per day. So you have 30 people for 30 days, that's $27,000 in savings just by not having to pay their travel time, which will rent the entire studio for the month. So all, everybody that we have talked to, every production is very excited. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that we can work out the uh, contract with the city. We should know within the next 30 days or so. Now the other two issues are related. The issues with the unions and the issues with the vetting and, and having these illegitimate productions coming to town. Um, my company, Southern Gateway, we went through a vetting process with, with the IA, the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, and we finally got approved to be what they call civilian term signatories, meaning that even though we're not affiliated with the, the union, they have entrusted to us the ability to sell that very low national term agreement to any production under one condition, that we vet the production, that we hold their money, that we make certain everyone gets paid. So in one fell swoop, we have solved the problems of having to negotiate with unions and having to deal with productions coming to town that don't actually have financing. Because if a production comes to Savannah and they don't go through us, and they say, no, we don't want to save all this money with the term agreement, and we don't want to be vetted, well, guess what they did? They just waved a giant red flag in front of the city and in front of the union, and they are probably going to be run out of town right quick. So hopefully with those three things in place, um, all, by the end of this year, you're going to see those numbers jumping dramatically. And I'll just end with, um, one simple example, the TV, there's a TV show on AMC that some of you may have seen, it's called Preacher. 
um, they filmed their first season in Albuquerque and they wanted to move and they narrowed down where they wanted to film season two to either Savannah or, Louisa or New Orleans. And they came to Savannah and they said, we love it here. We, uh, we really want to, all we need is a stage. And they had to be told it doesn't exist. So they went to Louisiana. Now, if you look a year from now and a production can come to Savannah and they can have the 30% from the state, the 10% local incentive, they can have the national term agreement, the lowest rates with the unions. They can have a facility where they have everything all in one space, all the vetted services. At that point, you're talking of literally a position where we can pick the productions that we want to come to town at that point. It'll be a whole new ball game at that point. So um, thank you very much for your time. If there's, I don't know if I have time to take questions or anything, if anybody has any, I'm happy to if I can answer if I can.